So, uh, William Provine, famous atheist, once said, There are no gods, no purposes, no goal-directed forces, no life after death, no ultimate foundation for ethics, no ultimate meaning to life, and no free will for humans either. <laughs> Hello, guys. It is us so far. Welcome, all you Bible believers out there and anyone who may be tuning in. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the atheist worldview and uh, what all that entails when li- aligned with the uh, Christian worldview. So I was going through some notes of mine and uh, came across some work by uh, different Christian individuals in the uh, community out there. And uh, Cliff Conchetti or Concutty, Cliff Kennicut is one of the guys. He's got a uh, wonderful station called Give Me an Answer. And uh, if you guys have watched any of his material, he does a, a great job on college campuses uh, for defending the Word of God. And uh, not a King James guy, and he kind of misses the mark sometimes when they challenge him on uh, on the universe and <laughs> different things like that, because you have to kind of go outside of the Bible to, to talk about uh, what science says about how far the stars are away and, and different topics. Uh, some, of, some of these ideas are kind of borrowed from guys like Jeff Durbin and, and Jeff Durbin's got a great street ministry that, that he does uh, mostly in front of abortion clinics I kind of wish he would hit the lost people in the street but he kind of targets women pregnant women um, but I guess he's got a lot of women supporting him uh, uh, that that are part of that ministry so I guess in that sense you know so be it you don't find too many Calvinists that do much street, street preaching um, everything's already been uh, fixed and and or and uh, <laughs> fixed and done before the world began, or whatever verse they try to pull out to uh, uh, determine that we don't have any free will because everything's uh, already already determined. Um, so that you know kind of leads me to this interesting uh, perspective from the atheist, because William Provine himself, and in fact most atheists that you guys come across, will tell us that there's no free will for humans. It doesn't exist. There is no free will. Wow, that's kind of interesting that an atheist would say that because that lines up directly with the Calvinist. But the thing about that is when you actually look into Calvinism, um, I don't have a problem with John Calvin as a man for the time that he lived in because he was a product of his era. And so we could see moving on from then, hundreds and hundreds of years later, what those errors were. But instead of admitting, okay, he was wrong about this, this, or that, the Reformed Calvinists just continued to hammer those things home. And so John Calvin himself, he wasn't anti-free will, uh, as some of the Reformed Calvinists might be. So John Calvin, when he talked about free will, he actually ascribed free will to all people in the sense that they act voluntarily and not by compulsion. Uh, He elaborated his position by allowing that Man has choice, and that is self-determined. Interesting, he didn't say God-determined, but he actually said man has choice, and it's self-determined. That's a quote by John Calvin. You guys can look that up. Um, And that his actions stem from his own voluntary choosing. Another quote by Calvin. So when you talk to Calvinists about free will and they talk, talk to you about, you know, it has been ordained before the world began or, or whatever those verses are that they want to go to, um, just check them out with Calvin. Okay, so you're a Calvinist. Why didn't Calvin believe that? And you'll start to see that a lot of that, a lot of that ideology didn't come from Calvin himself. It's coming from these reformed Calvinists. I'm only bringing that up because I think it's interesting that a lot of atheists today are starting to say that... Um, Humans do not have free will, and I think that's that's kind of crazy because that's the same thing that uh, Calvinists will say. Anyways, so my I guess my question for the atheist and perhaps the Calvinist would be, how do you know you can trust your senses? Uh, because we observe order and design, and we understand how the laws of logic matter, that is, in the Christian worldview, and it requires evidence and proof for the order and design that we observe in nature. We therefore seek to test out these things to see if they are so. Now there's a famous oceanographer uh, that lived in the 1800s, uh, Matthew Fontaine Murray, or Murray. Uh, He was a Christian oceanographer that uh, a lot of the research and discoveries that he made 
came directly from his understanding of the scripture. And him reading the Bible and the Bible talking about the things under the ocean or the things, you know, of this world, uh, he put him to the test. He's like, okay, so I agree with what the Bible says. It's the word of God. And, and the Bible saying this, this and that about the water, about the ocean. Let's, let's see if that's true. So when you look at uh, characters like that in the past who, who were faithful men of God that trusted and believed in the word of God, and you find that they've got, uh, you find that they've actually made a lot of discoveries based on the word of God. I mean, that's pretty fascinating. That just shows you that we can test out to see that these things are so, as the Bible tells us. And that's exactly what these men did. And I don't know if any atheist would have been up for that task. Obviously, they reject the book the second they look at it. <laughs> you know, what is this black book, you know, with the uh, with the gold or red edges, you know, and they, they see it and they just think it's archaic, it's outdated, you know, and so a lot of these new Bibles will try to update themselves to look modern, but, you know, the atheist, atheist is going to reject that just the same. So when the Bible tells us things like, be sure your sin will find you out, <laughs> I think that might be some of what's going on within the hearts and minds of... Uh, a lot of these people that uh, refuse to read or check out the Word of God uh, because they know that book is checking them out at the same time. So that, you know, the, I think Ruckman once said, the Bible will either keep you from your sin or your sin will keep you from the Bible. Um, one of those two. <laughs> Anyways, guys, let's continue on with this because I do have some notes taken here and I want to try to hammer through this one and not take up too much time. I want to try to start keeping these videos down to a certain time limit. I, I know... Uh, just keeping record of who's watching what and who's skipping around. I don't want to lose a lot of you guys. I want to try to keep your attention. So let's stay focused here. Uh, so our worldview as a Christian requires us to be honest and objective when providing evidence for truth claims made of the observed world about us. Ultimately, this is how Christians reason and discover. Uh, that's why we see a lot of uh, college universities such as Princeton, Harvard, Oxford, or any college university worth its salt you will notice that they didn't exactly start off as atheistic universities because they did not support the atheist worldview. Uh, they were Christian seminaries and institutions. Now, we can look at... <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people might actually have questions even about that because you'll start to see the Jesuits and you know, those kind of people entering these colleges and these universities around that time and, and also infiltrating... Uh, the hearts and minds of the people that were uh, trying to better their education. So I know there's a lot of controversy about um, uh, the origin and the history of a lot of these universities, but they did in fact start out as uh, seminaries and uh, institutions with a Christian worldview. And that is because uh, it's the Christian worldview that gave rise to the scientific method. There it is, I said it. So I'm sure a lot of people will be upset, you know, if a Christian claims that it, it is the uh, Christian worldview that gave rise to the scientific method. And I'm sure the lists are long and rejection against that, but it doesn't matter. No matter to me, at least, uh, because ultimately, if we can't trust our senses and somebody says it's stupid to believe in miracles because of science, <laughs> you may have to press a little bit harder and ask those people, well, why are miracles stupid, especially in the atheistic worldview? Is it because we live in a world where the laws that govern our physical surroundings operate in a uniform fashion? Because certain principles of induction hold that the future will be like the past? At least, that is. Just as the sun has risen in days gone by, there's no logical reason to induce that it will not rise in the same fashion tomorrow. We can trust our senses, guys. We don't observe these random acts of chance and violation of natural law occurring everywhere we look. So when the atheist brings up miracles as a challenge against the Christian, he's now left his universe of random chance, time and space acting on matter through chaos with no purpose over ludicrous amounts of years, with no goal-directed forces, no ultimate foundation for the principles that govern his universe. And the atheist has now stepped into the Christian worldview as if there were some sovereign God holding everything together with a purpose directing the forces that govern the structure and order behind the elements we observe, in the foundation of our reality, ultimately bringing meaning into our lives. So, we understand when the atheist uses the miracle argument against a Christian worldview, he enters a state of cognitive dissonance, because he has to step into the Christian worldview to gather stock and to steal our capital. 
And then he has to run back over to atheism with the stolen capital he's gotten from the Christian worldview. And now he's able to start making fun of the Christian to tell him how stupid miracles are and have no place in science. However, it's not weird that dead men can rise or that the sun can stand still or even that an ass can speak, that is, in the atheist worldview. Now, why did I say that? Because isn't it atheism that teaches us evolution through long periods of time and even exhilarated evolution and different things like that? And so, in the atheist worldview, if an animal has a jaw or a mouth or a tongue or anything like that, if it could make some kind of noise out of its mouth, isn't it possible that through long periods of time, nature could evolve the esophageal cords or evolve the creature or the animal to such a degree where it could actually begin to speak? I mean, that's what happened to us, right? That's how we're able to talk. So, you know, atheists just need to think that one out when it makes fun of the Bible. Um, and I say that because science is actually beginning to teach us that. There's a futurist that says uh, there will be talking animals by 2050. Uh, futurologist Ian Pearson recently predicted that by 2050 it will be possible to implant a device into pets and other animals to give them the ability to speak to us. So now that's a form of exhilarated uh, evolution where where man is actually in control of the animal to where it's exhilarating its ability to talk. So isn't that what God did <laughs> when he stepped in time and exhilarated the ass's ability to speak? And the atheists make fun of uh, the Christian for believing that an uh, uh, ass could speak. I don't think it's that far out there um, because they're actually talking about doing the same thing. Um, and, when, and of course, in their worldview, just give evolution enough time and all the animals will talk. So, guys, again, it's ridiculous that they make fun of us for that kind of stuff because their worldview totally supports that. That's weird in the Christian worldview. Because our foundation of natural law, order, and design hold fast. And miracles to the Christian is in violation of this. But not for the atheist. Not, not in a world of random chance and things like that. Uh, the atheist is a hypocrite at this point. If he says we can only know things by testing and observation, simply ask him the question. Have you observed every scientific test and experiment known to mankind? Especially the ones that we now take for granted? No, of course they haven't. They haven't observed at all, not even to the slightest. So what are they basing their acceptance on when they use the scientific method? Well, the witnesses who were there to observe and perform these tests before them, of course. Now that's great, <laughs> because this is exactly what we have in the Christian worldview. God preformed real supernatural events in history through these miracles, and we have actual witnesses who observed and tested these phenomena to see if they were so and recorded the events. Now, the atheist doesn't have to like their testimony or he can choose not to accept it, but the fact remains. When an atheist says we can only know things by testing and observation, then he's either being intellectually dishonest with his worldview or he's spot on with the Christian worldview. And we should thank him for using our method because this is exactly how it has already been done for us in the records. Much has been written on textual criticism, so there's no need to go down that rabbit hole. Rest assured, the atheist has to use Christian capital when applying it to the scientific method. You're welcome.